Welcome on in to Wager Talk Extra, final edition of the week for you. So we're going to get you ready with some auto racing. We got a little F1 Canadian Grand Prix preview coming our way from our man Andy Lang. And then Kyle Anthony going to give you the final word on UFC for this weekend. He's got a bet in the main event. He's got a fight to watch, and he's also up 20 units over the last four events. We'll be talking to him about UFC to end the episode but the man who needs no introduction, but I'll give him one anyways. Andy Lang joining us here. And Andy, no NASCAR for us to get into until next week's edition. So it's all F1. And we got the Canadian Grand Prix. How are you expecting this course to kind of shake out before we get into a best bet you have for the folks? Well, if we want to take a look at the track, you can see why, if you've been following Formula 1 this year, why this should be another Red Bull runaway Um They've got the long straight straightaways, not as drastic as last week, but or uh, last race. But you can see this is just going to be a, a Red Bull romp here, as there's just not enough small turns for Mercedes to to gain some edge. And I expect Max Verstappen to be on the pole again. I expect him uh, to run away with it. If there are not any late cautions, or if he doesn't come in and pit and try and go for fastest lap, he's going to win by thirty seconds or so i mean he won by almost 25 seconds in the last race and that and the story coming out of last race was how amazing mercedes looked as they're 25 seconds behind the leader so uh this is a red bull track again i think most of the tracks this, for the rest of the year are going to be red bull tracks again max has already brought up he thinks red bull can win every race this year without reliability issues or um you know rex i think I think that's well within reach. It's going to be tough to do, but I think they can do it. Mercedes, we know about their upgrades. They look fantastic. They finished second and third. If Sergio Perez isn't a bonehead and if he qualifies decent, I think he ruins their their parade. I think he finishes in on the podium and knocks one of them off. Ferrari continue to shoot themselves in the foot. We've gone over that. And, uh, you know, the, the interesting one was Lance Stroll finishing ahead of Fernando Alonso. It was just an off race. I would expect Alonzo to have a nice bounce back. But uh, the team that I'm really excited about right now, as far as a betting perspective, is the Alpines. Espan Ocon is a top 10 machine now. Gasly finished 10th last race. He finished ahead of Charles Leclerc and uh, right behind uh, one of the Alfa Romeos, which was a little bit interesting. But you're seeing the Alpines really kind of get into the rhythm. They've been good for most of the year, but Ocon in particular has been been very, very good. And um, the, they have a really nice article on Formula1.com talking about the Alpines and the Alpines saying that, you know, they, they love where they're at with their cars. They're ahead of schedule and they feel like the results are there. And I think this is a, a team that you can support for double top 10. Ocon absolutely is a wonderful parley piece um, inside the top 10. So those are a couple things I would be looking at. Uh, Ferraris are untouchable in the betting markets right now. Um, and then I guess the the we have a little bit of disappointment with Lando Norris. He gives us a little bit of, oh, hey, look, Lando Norris is in the top 10 for a race. Oh, he did it again. And oh, no, he finishes a lap down in 17th. You know, has he gets damage on his car. So it's good. that guy's just tough. He's going to be a stay away for me. And honestly, if we're looking at the betting markets, you just got to focus on the the drivers and the teams that you know what to expect. We know what Max is going to give us. We know what Mercedes is going to give us. We know what the Alpines are going to give us. But Ferraris, we have no idea race to race how they're going to screw up their strategy. We know they are going to screw up their strategy. We just don't know how. <laughs> they seem to surprise us every week uh, with something new. So you can't bet on them. Lance Stroll is in a great car, but he's hit or miss. Um, with 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 how he finishes, and then uh, the rest of them are kind of stayaways for me. So uh, Sergio Perez, no telling how that guy can mess up qualifying. He keeps doing it. It's a couple races in a row, and it's too bad because he's got incredible race speed. So if he qualifies up front, expect podium finishes out of him. But uh, some of these guys are just kind of unbettable, which is nice because we kind of know what we're doing uh, with each and every race now. I think the the betting, I think the bets that we make are going to be pretty predictable and pretty easy, and they're going to look very, very similar for the rest of the season. 
I love it. Great breakdown there, getting folks ready to go for F1 action this weekend up north. Maybe Prez will find his way towards the Canada game or the Canadian, excuse me, Grand Prix. Um, it's only natural. I uh, I screwed up when I mentioned the word Prez. It just like infiltrates you like a thought there, Andy. <laughs> So, Andy, you do have a best bet here for the folks, and uh, what are we eyeing? You talked about a couple different teams. How do we think Mercedes is going to fare this weekend? Well, uh, first off, we have uh, our auto racing pack that is up at wagertalk.com. We're on a 2011 run. Full disclosure, we started off the year terrible. Uh, we lost our NASCAR bets. We haven't bet on NASCAR in a while, and I'm glad we haven't because Formula One's been fantastic. 20 and 11 run on those and the pack is up right now it will include bets from practice from qualifying and the race we've been really good in practice and qualifying so um don't don't overlook those betting markets those have been a really nice source of profit so if you get the pack now you'll get all of the plays Mm -hmm. that we have in practice and qualifying dan you know our favorite bet this year has been mercedes double top 10 now with these Mm -hmm. upgrades and with the uncertainty of some of these other guys let's move it to double top six um I know they finished second and third. I don't expect a double podium out of them every week, but the fact is they're better drivers and their team is better with strategy than Ferrari right now. I don't think they quite have the race pace to finish ahead of Perez and Verstappen, but I could see a 3-4. I could see a 4-5 finish out of them if Fernando Alonso is good. Other than that, I don't know who competes with them, especially on this track. So you can you can play Mercedes at double top 10 at minus 300, or if you just win a single bet, I think they're fine at minus 140 for Mercedes, double top six. The upgrades looked fantastic. Race pace was there, as was the pace in qualifying. And I think uh, some of the other teams are now looking up at Mercedes. And if we're doing the team power rankings, I think it's Red Bull, and I think it's Mercedes, and then it's everybody else. Mercedes double top six. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And in fact, uh, change it from a top 10 into a top six bet, says our man Andy Lang. Make sure you check him out. WT.buzz slash AL. Use that promo code Andy3. Get a great deal for this weekend's action. We love to see it for our man Andy Lang, who's cashing tickets weekend after weekend. He always says, I don't know if I can do as good as last weekend. And then uh, he somehow outdoes himself. So Andy Lang, check him out over there at waitertalk.com. We're going to step aside. And then and Kyle Anthony going to have the final word for us this week, talking a little UFC main event right after this here on Wager Talk Extra. Welcome on back here to Wager Talk Extra. Now time to bring in my man, Kyle Anthony. And uh, we were talking before the show started. This is the best hair segment of the show, of the week. Although Nick Borman, I will say, he comes on quaff and strong. So he he might have a claim to the throne, but uh, (laughs) we'll visit that on a different episode, Kyle. Always love having you on, man. And uh, the, the clients have definitely loved riding with you over the last four events. Up 20 units. And that's going on top of the fact that this man's the number one MMA capper over the last three years. So short term says ride with Kyle long term says ride with Kyle. We love having you on brother. We appreciate you getting off of the Marina to come and talk to us here. So let's get into the main event this evening. And this is uh, or, or I guess this weekend rather. And this one, um, this one's a little tight on the money line. How are you going to be breaking down this one? Yeah, we got to pick him here. We got Marvin Vittori, who's minus 120. We got the comeback here on Jared Candonier. It's about minus 106, roughly around there. And if you're looking at what these guys do well, first thing is Marvin Vittori, he can utilize that pressure, that cardio, that pace, move forward, get on you, grind on you. That's kind of been his path. On the other side here, you got Jared Candonier, big guy for the division, strong power. He does a lot of great things on the feet. But the big question here is, can Marvin Vittori's cardio and pressure really kind of get him to the victory here. And it's worked out well for him. He's utilized that many times, you know, out hustling his opponents, outpacing his opponents. And really that comes down to just draining his cardio, draining his opponent's cardio, getting in there, lowering their cardio, doing those things that they're able to do to slow him down. But if you're really looking at it also is that Vittori definitely is a guy that has a great chin. You know, he's a guy that goes out there. He can take a brick to the face. He can keep moving forward. He can keep going in there. And that's something that, to me, will help him if he's trying to cut this distance. If he's trying to get his hands on you, that helps him if he can take the big shots and keep moving forward. But the one thing also is that, you know, people really look at Jared Candonier as a guy that, hey, can he go five rounds? And Vittori can go five rounds. But if you're really looking at it, you got to look at the fact that the last, out of the last four fights, three of which 
Went a, a full five rounds for Jared Cannonier. He was very good out there when it just came out to just pacing himself. He went two and one over that span of those three fights. And, you know, he beat um, Kelvin Gastelum. He beat Sean Strickland. Sean Strickland is a tough out for anybody when you're talking about a five round fight. He's got that pace. He's got that pressure. He did lose to Israel Adesanya. No harm there. Kind of figured that distance fight with Adesanya is something that's going to be very difficult. But Vittori is a guy that really, when you're looking at it, he's going to look to clinch. He's going to look to get on you. And that is something that I actually think Kidanier does very well. He's got good knees, good elbows in the clinch. He frames off his opponent very well, can set up some nice shots in there, can create space also if he's having some problems in the clinch as well too. But striking-wise, this goes all to, uh, I think, Jared Kidanier. He's got the more versatile striking. He's got the more power. He mixes up his combinations far better, I think, on the feet. And even the fact with the leg kicks, I think this is going to be a target for him early and often. Vittori, slower, plotting, moving style, doesn't have the greatest footwork. And I think this is really where you can see a lot of success coming from Jared Cannonier chopping away at the legs. And if you look at Vittori striking, you know, since 2018, when he fought Israel Adesanya that first time, I think it's kind of stayed the same. I mean, he has not really evolved. He has not really gotten better. The same kind of one-two combinations, wildly coming in, in, in uh, you know, in uh, forward and just taking those shots to the face. I think this is a spot where really he can kind of control the action a little bit. Jared Kinnear can control the action, work from the outside, utilize some of his good striking, chop away at the legs, pick him apart. So this is a spot here where I like Jared Kinnear. I think he can go out there, he can get the job done, he can really work his striking. He's going to land the more damaging shots. I think he's going to really pile that up, chop away at the legs, and really just find this as a 15, uh, I'm sorry, 25-minute fight at distance. So I like Jared Kandanier here, and uh, right now you're looking at minus 106. It's starting to tilt to plus money. I like this spot a lot. I think he goes out there, gets the job done, and I'm taking Kandanier in the main event. I love it. The breakdown, and, and I'm shocked. You come on here in first play as a dog. I don't know how you always do it, but somehow you find these dogs that end up winning outright. Sure, it's not a nice plus money dog, but uh, hey, we'll take it. They're only minus 106, only having to lay six cents. I don't hate that one right there. We're looking towards Cannoneer in the main event, and you also have a fight to watch for us here, and this one has a little bit more of a sizable favorite in Salikov. So I'm wondering, Kyle, uh, your fight to watch, uh, why are you so excited for it, and what do you think the play is? Yeah, this is a good fight here. It's an exciting fight. And I think also a lot of people are kind of sleeping on this one. You got Muslim Salikov, who is minus 196 on the comeback here. You've got Nicholas Dalby plus 152. And the reason why I think this is going to be exciting is Salikov brings a lot of excitement. He is explosive. He's got good striking. He's well-rounded. He brings these crazy spin, spinning attacks. And he can consistently do those. And if he lands one, the night could be over for Dalby. But if you look at Dalby, he's a grinder. He's a striker. He's going to move forward, try to pressure you, cut that distance, and again, grind on you, push you up against the fence. And if this is going to be a striking bout, stand up at distance, Muslim's definitely going to have that advantage where he's out there, the kickboxing, the striking, all of those things he's very good at doing and working in the space, utilizing some of the striking. But the thing is, is that the way Dalby fights, I think, brings a lot of positives for him. Now, if you've got a kickboxer or someone who likes to really kick, again, Muslim can get some takedowns, but a guy who likes to work in space, utilize some of that, you know, the way to, to really slow down the striking is smothering the kicker. Get in there, smother the kicker, get in close, force him on the back foot, harder to throw strikes, harder to go out there and do anything, really, and that is how Dalby fights. He will push forward, he will continually push forward, push the pace, keep that volume going, those are a lot of the things that I think he can do absolutely well. And really, again, Muslim needs that space. And the other thing that it does with this pressure for Dalby is going to be the cardio. And we've seen Muslim have some issues with the cardio lasting. And the issue with that really is a lot of his movements are explosive. He needs to have a lot of energy doing these spin kicks, these, these high-level kicks. Yes, he has them. Yes, if he lands it, it can cause damage. But consistently keeping it over the period of 15 minutes, I think is going to be difficult for him in this spot. Muslim has the ability to keep, I mean, sorry, um, Dalby has that ability to really push that pace, to really get in there, to really work hard in close. And in the clinch, I think he has a lot of advantages going in there, getting in tight, keeping him there. And again, 
Muslim is more technical. He wants to be at range. And Dalby is scrappy. He wants to get in close. He wants to make it dirty. This is going to be in the apex cage. It's going to assist him in the landscape of trying to get these takedowns, of trying to get in close. And also the fact that, yes, you know, can Muslim get a knockout here? Sure he can. But Dalby has never been finished in his professional career. The only way that I think Muslim wins rounds is going to be hurting him. Is is a big moment, big shot that rocks Dalby and can win him the round. So I don't really think that happens here. I think this is more of Dalby utilizing that chin, going in there, really fighting very hard. And if you look at statistically speaking, you know, Dalby doubles Muslim in significant strikes thrown per 15 minutes. So he's going to have that aggressive style. He's going to have that volume. You also add in Delby's going to have a four inch reach advantage. I think all of these things really set up nicely for him in this spot. So if you're going to give me plus money with the guy that I think has all the tools to really have a path to victory, you got to give me Nicholas Dalby at plus 152. Money has come in on him, and I agree with it. But still, at this plus money, I like it. I'm taking Nicholas Dalby to get the job done. I knew you wouldn't get out of here without giving us some plus money. I love that out of you, Kyle. So we're looking towards double dogs here from my man, Kyle Anthony. WT.buzz slash KA. You see beneath me, 4% package is up and available. So tell them how they can grab that, Kyle. Yeah, you go on wagertalk.com. I have four plays up right now. Going to be adding a fifth probably later today. Really like it. The one spot here, main spot. 4% 4% play, really excited about it. We just came off hitting two 4% plays not long ago on the same night. I think we got to keep it going. Excited to see how this pans out. And let's get it done this weekend. I love it. Let's get it done. And, and apropos, because we are done here on another edition of Wager Talk Extra. We appreciate you tuning in. If you enjoy the show, we, all we ask you to do is hit that subscribe button. Of course, check out our, our handicappers over at wagertalk.com. Big thanks to Andy Lang. Big thanks to Kyle Anthony and all our great guests all week long, reminding you that no matter what sport you're cashing in on, that money all is going to spend the same. I've been your host, Dan Alexander, and we'll see you locked and loaded for another three-pack right here next week on Wager Talk Extra.